Welcome to Electro Online. Take a look at this problem and you see now we're dealing with decimals. Just like with fractions, we rather get rid of those decimals first. So what we're going to do here is multiply both sides of the first equation by 10 to get rid of that decimal point. So multiply the left side by 10 and multiply the right side by 10. And we'll leave the bottom equation alone. So let's see what that turns out to be. So we end up with 8x plus 3y is equal to 70. And then we repeat the bottom equation, 2x plus y equals 20. Now here, when I try to strategize on how we can solve this, I take a look at the second equation, and it looks like I can solve this for y in terms of x. In other words, I can write this as follows. I can say 8x plus 3y equals 70 for the top equation, but the bottom equation can become y equals minus 2x plus 20. So now notice, if I write the second equation like this, I can then substitute that into my first equation for y. The reason why that seemed like the right thing to do, so in this case we're going to use the method of substitution, is because I was able to identify that I had y as a 1y equals some function of x, and that makes it really easy to, in, to substitute into the other equation. So that becomes the following. We get 8x plus 3 times, instead of y, I write what y is equal to, which is 2x plus 20, is equal to 70. And now we have an equation with just one variable x that is easy to solve. So 8x plus 3 times the negative 2, that would be minus 6x plus 60 equals 70. So move the 60 over to this side. We get 8x minus 6x equals 70 minus 60. Then combine like terms, 2x is equal to 10. Divide both sides by 2, we get x equals 5. And so that means we now have an easy way to figure out what y is equal to by substituting it back into this equation right here. So let's do that. We get y is equal to minus 2x plus 20. And so now instead of x, we're going to write 5. So y is equal to minus 2 times 5 plus 20. We get y is equal to minus 10 plus 20, or y is equal to 10. So you can see that definitely the method of substitution is a rather easy method in this particular case. But now we want to make sure we did things correctly. So what we should do is plug these values back into the original other equation. So we use the second equation to come up with the value for y. So let's now check with using the first equation. So check. Now, instead of using the equation with decimals, let's go ahead and use the equation where I multiply everything by 10. So I'm going to use this equation to see if I did everything correctly. So we have 8x plus 3y is equal to 70, and now I plug in for x and y, I plug in 5 for x and 10 for y. So 8 times 5 plus 3 times 10, should be 10 right there, is that question mark equal to 70? So this is going to be 40 plus 30 equals question mark 70, and obviously 70 equals 70. So it looks like the two values that I got for x and y look like they're correct, and that is how it's done. You are told why you don't want to use the same equation that you found the y? Yeah, I explained it before in another case, but you're right. So why did I pick the first equation to check rather than the second equation? Well, I used the second equation, once I found the value for x, I used the second equation to find the corresponding value for y. If I now plug those two, let's say I made a mistake, and I plug those two values back into the second equation, which is what I used to find these values in the first place, well, if I made a mistake, it's going to look like it's correct. But if I plug those two values into the other equation that I didn't use to find the value for y, and I made a mistake, then it'll become very clear. So that's why to make sure you want to plug those values into the other equation you didn't use to find the second value. And that's why we do it. Correct. I always go to the original equation, even though it may be harder. 
Yes, there is a potential danger, you're right. So I went ahead and I used what we would call the altered first equation instead of the original first equation. And there's a danger that if you made a mistake altering the equation, then you may not catch your error. Sometimes when you made a mistake altering it, you will catch the error. Um, well, actually you might not, so you're right. It's, my, it's prob probably better to put into the original equation unless you're pretty sure you didn't make a mistake. So when I multiplied everything by 10, it looked quite obvious that the conversion from here to here was a correct conversion. So I felt pretty comfortable using that equation instead. <laughs> but strictly speaking, you're probably better off putting it into the top equation. Original. The original equation, yes. Good point.